Okay, I want to go over the idea behind the proof for L'Hopital's rule. Now, let's, let's think about, let's consider two functions here. Let's consider a, an f and a g okay, on an interval. Okay, so I've got uh, this, this uh, let me do these in different colors. I'll do the f in blue here. Okay, whoops. And uh, I'll do the pink, the G. Okay. Now, let's suppose that we have a couple of functions here. This is the F function, and this is the G function. And here's A, I mean, here's B, and here's A. Okay. And let's suppose that this point right here is C. Now, let's, so C is between A and B. So C is in this interval A, B. And let's suppose that F and G are differentiable on this interval. Okay. So we have F and G are differentiable in that interval, except, let's make the, the exception that maybe at x equals c. In other words, f and g are differentiable, except maybe at x equals c. And let's let's do this. And g prime of x does not equal zero on a b, except maybe at x equals c. Now, something else we need to, we need to uh, suppose, and, and you can see this from the graph, the limit as x goes to c of f of x is the same as the limit as x goes to c for g of x. These are both equal to 0. So if, if we were to talk about the limit as x goes to c, of f of x over g of x, we have the indeterminate case. Of 0 over 0. Okay, so with indeterminate. So we would find 0 over 0. Now, when these conditions are met, in other words, when you have a situation like this, here's what we say. We say that the limit as x goes to c of f of x over g of x, we say that that's the same as the limit as x goes to c of f prime of x over g prime of x, provided this thing has to exist or be infinite. So, it has to exist or be infinite. The derivative one does. Okay, so there, there's some things going on here at C. We don't know if the function is differentiable at C. Perhaps g prime of C is equal to zero. So let's do this. Let's define two new functions big F of X, but before we do this, let's, let's just suppose that, let's, let's do this, let's suppose that the conditions are all met and that the limit as X goes to C of F prime of X over G prime of X, let's just suppose that does equal some limit. In other words, let's suppose that limit exists. Now, let's do this. Let's see if we can clear up some, uh, some things about the point x equals c. I'm going to define a new function, and I'm going to make it equal to f of x. So big F of x is equal to little f of x, lowercase f of x, every place but in the, where x equals c. Okay. 
Now at x equals c, I'll say that the function big F of x is equal to 0. So if x is actually equal to c, then big F of c is 0. And I'll do the same thing for g. Okay. So it's equal to little g if, if x does not equal c, and it's equal to 0 if x does equal c. Now, the reason I did that is because now we have this situation. Notice that f of x, big F of x, and big G of x are differentiable on, uh, well, are continuous. Let's do this. Are continuous on C, X, right? And differentiable on, actually, let me go back and make this a closed interval here. And are differentiable on CX. Okay, so let's go up here and look and see, let's go back to our graph and see what that looks like. Here is, a, so here's just an X in here. And if I pick any X in here between A and B, like right here, you can see, and I'm, I'm going to pick a number to the right. What we're going to end up doing is a right-hand limit. So I pick an, uh, just an X value to the right, and what we have here is continuity and differentiability. So F and G are continuous on the closed interval, C to X, and differentiable on the open interval, C to X. Now, that being the case, we know that Cauchy's uh, mean value theorem tells us that there exists a C, uh, a Z, between C and X, such that this is true. F prime of Z over G prime of Z is equal to F of X minus F of C over g of x, big G of x, minus big G of c. This is what Cauchy's theorem tells us. Now, we could, ha I picked, I have x to the right of c, but we could have done it the other way. We're, we're going to be dealing with the right-hand limit here in just a second. So what I'm doing is showing Lopatel's rule for a right-hand limit. So let's see what we have up here now. Between x and c, we have some z. Okay, so this is the situation we have. This is what it looks like graphically. Now, we know that big F of C and big G of C are both zero. So really now what we have, we could, we could rewrite this as big F of X over big G of X. Now we also know that big F of X and little f of X are the same as long as X does not equal zero. So really what we have here is this, this. Okay. Furthermore, F, big F prime of Z would be the same as little f prime of Z. Big G prime of Z is the same as little g prime of Z. So now here's what we have. Now, I'm going to take the limit on the left. Now, I'm going to do this. I'm dealing with a Z here, so I'm going to let Z go to C. And then on the, on the, uh, the limit on the right, I'm going to let x go to c, but you can see they're approaching the same thing. The, the limits are going to be the same. In other words, letting z go to c or letting x go to c, you're going to get the same, same limit. So now I've got the limit as z goes to c. And that equals the limit as x goes to c.
and we already uh, we already know that this limit exists f prime of z over g prime of z the limit of z z goes to c and that equals l now this is what we want it to show now actually I need to go back and make some changes here because what I'm doing here is I'm I'm approaching from the right so instead of saying just the limit let me just make a correction here let me put a little plus here because I am approaching from the right so what I've really shown here is the right hand limit you could go through a similar procedure and show the left hand limit 